In different corners of the globe, pioneering scientists use completely different ways of turning the coronavirus into a vaccine to achieve in months what typically takes 10 to 15 years. An entirely new method was chosen by a big pharma giant in America. Dr. Katherine Janssen leads a team of 650 people as Pfizer's head of vaccine research and development. Smuggled out of East Germany at just two years old, her family started life in the West with just the clothes on their backs. I had whooping cough as a, as a child. And, you know, you get a med medication that stops your cough. Uh, that, that is impressive. And so I thought um, that would be, would be a wonderful to work in a field where you could develop, you know, those little pills that would make people feel better. BioNTech and Pfizer's vaccine takes a groundbreaking new approach. Each coronavirus particle is filled with genetic instructions called RNA and covered in crown-like spikes made of protein. The spike on these viruses is critical for vaccine scientists because its unique shape is key to the body's immune response. Pfizer first make a copy of the spike gene in the lab, made from a type of genetic code called mRNA, and then deliver this into the body in a protective bubble of fat, or lipid. Once inside a cell, the bubble breaks down and the coronavirus spike is built, triggering those all-important antibodies. The attractiveness of the RNA platform is that it allows you to adapt very quickly. You can go really at light speed. Another mRNA vaccine was also being developed at America's National Institutes of Health. And in early 2020, as the virus spread, the US top biomedical research center was already several steps ahead. We did this so fast because we did everything for the last six or seven years, very slow. Why wouldn't you use all of that knowledge that you prepared to really deploy a vaccine as quickly as possible in this moment? Kizzy first came to NIH 15 years ago as a teenage summer intern encouraged by family to follow her passion for science. We had this beautiful, productive collaboration with this biotech company, Moderna. The NIH Moderna vaccine became the very first shot against COVID-19 to be trialed in humans. BioNTech and Pfizer released positive early human trial results at almost exactly the same time as Moderna. The care for the quality, looking carefully at safety, all of this was what I call normal routine procedure. The process never changed. It's how we compress time and how we did parallel work. That's really what changed. Pfizer now moved to phase three trials involving tens of thousands of people. Recruiting thousands of volunteers on this scale and at this speed had never been attempted before. Moderna revealed they'd hit a problem. I was not surprised that there was hesitancy around enrolling in clinical trials from African-American people. The hesitancy comes from a history of medical injustice that fueled mistrust that is just undeniable. For Kizzy, building trust in vaccines is every bit as important as developing them. In phase three trials, even the scientists don't know when results will come. Each trial must continue until a predetermined number of volunteers test positive for COVID-19. Independent statisticians monitor those cases in real time. Only when the threshold is reached do the vaccine scientists discover whether those who caught COVID had the vaccine or the placebo. Then, less than 10 months after the race for a vaccine began, an answer. In their final analysis of Pfizer's 170 volunteers who fell sick with COVID-19 during the trial, nearly all, 95%, were in the placebo group. This immense relief that, yes, now we will fight this thing and we will get the pandemic under control. It's just like 
That's an amazing feeling. I mean, that's, that's all I can say. Just one week later, there were enough cases of COVID in the 30,000 strong NIH Moderna trial to unblind their data. We expected it to work to some extent, but to 90, 95% efficacy for what was essentially a first in human vaccine was astounding. The COVID-19 pandemic has exacted and is still exacting an unbearable human cost. But thanks to the efforts of a small number of scientists, we are now being protected against an even worse fate. What's more, the way we do science is changed forever. It's been a massive global collaborative effort whereby everyone is invested in everyone else's success from a vaccine perspective. And so the sharing of knowledge in almost real time is unprecedented in this moment.